Welcome everyone to this episode of the Palmetto Guardian. I'm Sergeant Chelsea Baker. And I'm Sergeant Tim Andrews. And today we have some familiar faces visiting us again. Um, if I could get both of you to introduce yourself to everybody that's watching and listening. I'm Chaplain John Denny. I'm one of the full-time support chaplains. And I'm Jason Strong, one of the full-time support chaplains, also the battalion chaplain of the 1st of the 118th. Awesome. Well, I'm glad to have both of you back again. It's been a while. Thank you. Yep. Um, so what's been going on since the last time we kind of saw you? <laughs> what's been going well, on? Well, it's uh, <laughs> civil unrest, COVID, <laughs> pandemics. Yeah. Lots of tensions. Yeah, lots of tensions. Deployments to Washington, D.C., Yep. Uh, which, which Jason can probably talk to on that. Um, op tempo through the roof. Mm -hmm. People returning from deployments. Uh, strong bonds events or, or PDS events. So other than that, really not a lot. No, no. <laughs> Just your normal daily duties. <laughs> That's right. right. That's right. <laughs> yeah. No, so that, that a lot's been going on that we've had a lot happening. And I think last time we were here was in March or April, we were talking. Mm -hmm. Something like that. And yeah. Well, when the whole pandemic had first kind of started. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, yeah, a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff going on within our service members yeah. and the, the lives of their families. Um, so yeah, and it's just, it's Jason and I, what we, we work to really help maybe find some hope <laughs> and some calm mm -hmm. in the midst of all the chaos. Yeah, definitely. I mean, chaplains are a big role. And when I first enlisted, I didn't really know that we had chaplains. I didn't know what chaplains were. And then they started coming around the units and stuff. So it's always nice to have a familiar face that maybe you don't see all the time on drill weekends or at work and stuff that you can just talk to you about anything mm -hmm. and they really listen and can give you advice and all that kind of stuff. And it's a way to figure out how to get through these tough times and good times because it's good to celebrate whenever good things happen as well. Absolutely. So. And there's a lot of good things that are happening. Mm -hmm. They just get overshadowed by all the, the bad. Yeah. Uh, yeah. By all the static <laughs> and noise of, of, of the, of the flavor of the day, if mm -hmm. you will. Um, so yeah, there, there's a lot of good things that are happening, but again, it, it's hard to, to see that, mm -hmm. um, with, with, with all the fog that that's, or smog really, <laughs> the, the smog that that's around. Um, and, uh, Jason, he, he was up in Washington DC with, with his unit for civil unrest stuff. And, uh, and in the midst of that, you were able to, to go to Arlington Cemetery, you were able to go to the the mall at Lincoln Memorial, and see some things. And um, so, yeah, while well, while they were there for a difficult mission, they were able to take a breath and be able to do some things to um, to grow themselves, mm -hmm. not just spiritually, but take a time out and be able to grow themselves historically, grow themselves educationally, and uh, and really kind of grasp those opportunities that were given to them. Mm -hmm. So I'll, I'll let Jason talk to some of that. Yeah, no, it w <clears throat> again, it was, it was good to be able to, to see others kind of um, contextualize some of what goes on in our country by actually being in that environment. And it was a, it was a great honor and a privilege to be able to, to be a part of that mission it was, a, it was a great mission. It was a challenging mission in a lot of respects. But we did have opportunities to circulate around a little bit um, and as ambassadors uh, for, uh, for all that is good uh, with, our, with our citizenry. And so it was probably one of the more uh, interesting moments for me. You know, I'd been up in D.C. before, and so I had kind of seen those things. So I... I I wasn't quite as enamored maybe with some of those uh, locations. However, the, the sweet moments were being able to sit at the World War II Memorial and to, to meet individuals who were there um, on the anniversary uh, of those of D-Day and uh, be able to, who had family members who were a part of that event, um, who had served, and be able to, to just engage with them and to hear their stories and to, uh, to remind, I guess, connect with them on a human level. Mm -hmm. Because I think that's what we, we miss, regardless of what we, what we wear or what we perform or, or, or where we're serving. We're, 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 we're on a human level. We're connected with each other. And I think um, that was probably one of the sweetest things was be able to be ambassadors of this organization and yet do so in such a way that the humanity 
of who we are, that we're not somehow antithetical to, to our citizenry, but we are our citizenry. And we are one with them and we're for them. Um, and it was sweet to see expressions of, of, of them, citizens, being uh, ambassadors towards us and our service members. Now, as chaplains uh, with soldiers who might be, uh, have a, like with all the stuff going on and might have some anxiety, how would you, uh, what advice would you give to combat all this going on? Well, and I think Jason hit on, hit on it and Chelsea hit on a little bit with, with humanity and just mm-hmm. recognizing that people have different thresholds of stress and anxiety, um, and, and that's based off resilience, that's based off of experiences, that's just based off of how we're wired. Mm-hmm. So to continue to be patient with one another, because it, it's it's easy to compare yourself to others and say, you know, that person's overreacting, that person's being dramatic, this person's blah, 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 blah. But we're all we're all wired differently, and we're all able to withstand different levels of adversity and different levels of of stress and so that's where i'm pulling in what jason was talking about the humanity just be human to one yeah. another and, and <laughs> willing to forgive and accept and to um to sit and, and just talk with mm-hmm. one another and show that compassion that that seems to be lagging and, yeah. and lacking within our our society without agenda just because mm-hmm. we simply care for one another Mm -hmm. you know what's important to you um because you're important to me what's important to you by extension matters Mm -hmm. and so um so you know when when folks are stressed when their anxieties levels are up when they're wrestling with the tensions of the day um i do think it's important to remember you know beneath it all we we are again we are we're, we're knit together just by just by design and so, um, you know, folks have made sentiments, um, I think even last night in the debacle of, as you referred to this debate, you know, the sentiment was still portrayed or communicated that we succeed together, that we're, we're, we're in this together. Um, I know at times families may not always, um, you know, you can't pick your family. And you may not always think that, um, <laughs> boy, I don't really um, agree with this family member, but we're still family at the end of the day. And we have a, a commonality, a common bond, and it's just uh, it's opportunities for us to grow. And I think, that's, I think that's what's important for us to see is not to get so enraptured by uh, all that is pressing in and challenging, but, but take a step aside and, and look at these things as opportunities for us. How can we grow through uh, through these through these moments, you know, not just we can you know we can you know um, theorize what that might look like for a country, but but really it's it's what about me? Mm-hmm. How can you know what is what is this? Whether it's financial pressure, relational pressure related to COVID, or uh, some other tension that's out in society, what is it? What is it instructive? How is it impacting? What am I doing with this? Mm-hmm. It, it can kind of cut both ways. When you take a step back and you, you start asking yourself, why am I so anxious? It, 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 it's an opportunity for us to kind of be a little more circumspect and say, what do I believe and where am I at? And we may come through that with a, with a, a, you know, a greater conviction that, you know, I, I just need to kind of keep on. And knowing that, you know, gold is refined by fire and and um, I'm on the right track, and it's not necessarily easy to lay hold of good and sweet things, but we got to, you know, sometimes you just got to lean forward and persevere. And yet that other side is, it's not maybe not just confirming about where we are, but it it may also be challenging us to say, you know what, I, I was walking around with these blinders on, and I really perceived myself to be something I, I wasn't really, I kind of lived in fairyland thinking, you know, I, I was really okay in my own spirit in this way. And now I need to be a little more honest and, and see this as an opportunity to improve upon 
myself, whether it's relationships. Hey, I'm a great communicator. I don't know what what my my kid's problem is, why they can't hear me, or I don't know why my spouse can't hear me, whatever. Maybe it's really an opportunity for me to say, maybe I'm not as good a communicator as I thought I was. And so what can I put in place to improve that which is important to me? And so trials and stresses shouldn't always be run from. We're, we're, you know, it's best to run, if you will, engage with them and bring something redemptive or look for some redemptive moment out of those things. And so as I talk to service members or their families even about of the, variety of, the variety of things that have gone on, it's, it's kind of hunting those kind of opportunities with them and, and having them then identify them positively. It's when folks don't want to engage that it's really tough to help. It's really tough to help. And, and that's why, you know, your chaplain's there. They want to help. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's why we're here for each other, whether you're a chaplain or not. You know, we wear the, the, this cloth and, and we're, we are a, a band of brothers. And yeah, we are um, a brother's keeper. Yeah. And, um, and so, you know, that's what we want to do. We want to try and help people search out how to, how to bring a redemptive moment. Um, so again, I made the reference earlier, gold is refined by fire. Nobody wants to go through a refiner's fire. I, I'm included in that. I, I want to run away from, I don't want any more hardship. I would be content in my own soul to settle with where I am personally right now. But I believe that, that God, God sometimes has to give me a kick in the seat of my pants to say, you would settle for less than what I want for you. Mm-hmm. And, and so individually, that's a reality. And I think corporately, so, you know, think concentric circles. I think organizationally, that's a reality. Gives us a kick in the seat of our pants to say, how can we be a better? We talk about these values. Well, I'm going to give you a kick in the seat of your pants. I'm really going to, in a sense, stress you some. Not to crush, but to refine, to make you more beautiful, to make you a greater servant in a sense. And then nationally, you know, you think that way. You know, how can we be even a better light, you know, not just to one another, but to the nations that are struggling? So that's kind of some of what's in my head as we walk through these days. No, I really like that. There's a lot in his head. (laughs) (laughs) Believe me. Believe me. I know we said 20 minutes. I could. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, 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 you made some very valid points. No, you're great. And I think everybody has so far because everything you were saying, and you too, sir, is I think people people get so wrapped up in what's going on, and they, they focus in on one thing, and they lose sight of it, and they stress about small things or they're not looking at the bigger picture and I mean I'm guilty of it sometimes where work is stressful life is stressful things just keep happening and it's like why can't something good happen but you have to like or also when you were saying about um, people not wanting to admit their faults everybody has faults in some way so um, it's a way to be able to grow and to stop looking at having tunnel vision and looking at the bigger picture of everything and why things are happening or how, what can I do to push myself to make it better right. instead of dwelling on it and constantly feeling that it's always bad. It's always bad. You know, there's a great book that, and I was looking at it in Jason's office and um, man's for search for meaning by Viktor Frankl. If you want a, it's a quick, easy read. Um, but if you're looking for answers, I mean, I recommend this. um, The only book I recommend more than that is the Bible. Um, (laughs) But Viktor Frankl was a psychiatrist who was in a concentration camp, and it gave him an opportunity to really see what made people flourish and what what caused people's demise. And he, he has this quote here that says, Everything can be taken from a man but one thing, the last of the human freedoms, to choose one's attitude in any given sort of cir- in any given set of circumstances, to choose one's own way. So, regardless of what you're up against, and regardless of if you're sitting there thinking, "Man, my, my life is just it's stinking. I'm in a world of suck right now." 
you're choosing that attitude. Mm-hmm. You, you're choosing, it, it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. So you can really choose your attitude to, to say, okay, I'm struggling. I've got these set of circumstances that are up against me. What do I do to improve my situation? Or do I just let the situation get the best of me? So really we have the attitude, the ability to be able to choose. And let's not forget that. You know, let's not just be victims all the time and victims to what we're hearing uh, in the news or social media. Let's step outside that and empower and give ourselves, similar to what Jason was saying, more credit than what we give ourselves mm-hmm. and empower ourselves to make decisions, to have the attitude of, I can make a difference. I can make a difference in my life. I can make a difference in someone else's life. I'm not a victim. And I, I see victim the victim mentality everywhere. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't have to be that way. We no. are empowered and God get, helps us with, with that power. You know, there's a, there's a, a, a verse in the Psalms that, um, that, uh, or Proverbs that speaks better a slap from a friend than a kiss from an enemy. And, and, you know, there are times when, you know, we can kind of go on personally or even societally kind of in this delusion that all is okay when not all is okay. And there are times when we need a, that friend to come by and, and have that conversation with us and have that hard conversation that, you know what, hey, I'm seeing this and, and, and I want to speak truth into your life, not to hurt you, but because I'm for you. And the only way for you to abound is to really kind of confront that honesty. You know, so what John was saying about, you know, we have that freedom to choose. I think one of the things that we can do, um, you know, just amongst each other is, you know, in that, in that honesty of our spirits towards one another, not from a place of condemnation, but, but honestly, you know, dealing with one another you know, engaging with each other, asking those questions when we can't get out outside of ourselves and see, what, how can I choose? How can I choose the high road or, or a good path in the midst of uncertainty and this darkness or, or looming darkness that I feel? Um, I think when we talk to others and, you know, ask for that help, um, we, but we need to be prepared for that help because that slap from a friend is redemptive. It's not designed to crush or destroy. It's designed to say, hey, I'm here warning you. I want to help wake you up to, uh, to, what is, to what will help you abound in life. And what was it that we were talking about, Micah? That's yeah. Of us. Yeah. So, uh, so I, I was talking with Chaplain Denny earlier, you know, that, you know, how, you know at the end of the day, how do, you, how do you walk? How do you walk in this world? And I, I just was thinking about Micah six eight, again where where God says, uh, He has told you, O man, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you, but to do justice, and to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. And that humbly part is the hard part that a lot of people wrestle with because mm-hmm. yeah. if I'm asking for help, that means you got to humble yourself. To realize yeah. that you need that help. Yeah. When they say something, how dare you say? <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. Right. People immediately That's, get defensive yeah. instead yeah. of That's instead of being very humble. Very true. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just uh, uh, so it. But that's a hard thing. Americans aren't really good at <laughs> at at humility. I don't humility. I don't think. Yeah. I think it's really tough. And I think when you're in this organization too, you put on this uniform. Humility is is wrongfully identified with weakness. And I think if there's not an organizational challenge, I think it's that. I think that's what keeps people from time to time going to one another, or coming to a chaplain or whoever, and and um, walk and 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 seeking out, you know, some walking alongside of, right. because we we mistake that hum that humility, or that honesty in our own soul with weakness, right. when the reality, it's absolutely the opposite. The strong have the ability to say, mm, "I'm stuck here," right. or "I'm really wrestling with this. I, I can't figure this out. I'm, you know, confronting something that's less than beautiful about ourselves." Takes strength, and then it takes more strength to actually engage to renew. Yeah, it doesn't say walk pridefully. No, your God says walk humbly.
<laughs> that's where we fall. Yeah. Is there anything, Andrews? No, they've, I know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you just wind us up. You just, wind us, knocked up. It out. <laughs> you just yeah. wind us up and we go. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, everything that both of you said was amazing because, I mean, this year has just been crazy with everything going on. And now we're going into the holiday season and it's people oh, are going to yeah. get more stressed. So it's nice to have people just talk and just explain, like you were saying, it's not a weakness and it's a stigma. If with anything, and especially in the military, it's yep. if if there's something wrong with you, it's a weakness instead mm -hmm. of figuring out a problem and a solution to make you stronger and overcome those things. And, and there's really nothing wrong with anybody. No, everybody's <laughs> different. Everyone's got their own <laughs> well, st stuff, mm -hmm. and uh, so it, it's and that's where I think people struggle with it. It's something's wrong with me. Mm -hmm. No, no, you're exactly where God needs you to be right now. So he can do a work in your life. Yep. And and just because today I may struggle with this and tomorrow I don't, you know, the, the same thing, I, I may hit, I may go through the same exact event tomorrow and it affect me in a different way mm -hmm. than it did today. And so when we talk about, you said earlier at the beginning about being patient with each other, I think it's also important. There was a, I'll take a step back a few weeks ago, there was a, a ton of stuff on my plate and uh, phone calls, things I need to respond, and I could feel palpably, I could feel my blood pressure rising, <laughs> and I actually could feel the palpation in my heart, and I thought, you know what, sit down, take a deep breath, you know, quiet yourself for a moment, nothing is going to explode in the next, you know, three minutes, and just quiet yourself, and quieted myself and then re-engaged and and it was a much better moment or experience for me as sometimes I think well, not only do we need to exercise some conscientious patience patience with others but also with ourselves mm -hmm. also say you know what I'm, I'm I'm getting ahead of myself here I need to just I need to I need to I need to give myself some patience or a, a time out to to reboot right and that's okay yeah. That's okay. Well, I really appreciate you guys coming back. I know we'll see you again. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you will. We always have a lot to say. I know. I, we love having you guys come on because you just, you, you have so much to give. And it's just nice to have people just expressing and allowing us to express and learn ways to be able to express ourselves. And like y'all kept saying, nothing's wrong with you. You're who you're supposed to be and all that kind of stuff. So I'm really glad that you, both of you were able to stop by and talk with us today. And I know that we'll have you sometime in the near future to talk about some other topics as well. Great. Well, we <laughs> yep. appreciate the opportunity as always. Thank you very much. Yes. Right. God bless y'all. Yep. Bye. All right. Um, for those of you who are watching, if you like this video, make sure you give it a big thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to our channel, make sure you hit the subscribe button, hit the bell so that you can be notified for new um, content that gets posted. And we will catch you in the next episode.